It's actually in the Old Testament. It's in Micah. Anyways, um, so we see that Jesus himself says, every day has its own troubles. And then we see, we, we, we know, we all know this verse. It says, your mercies are new every morning. Every morning. It's not that your mercies are new one time for the rest of my life. No, each day has its own troubles. And each day you need new mercies. So he says, my, my mercy, your mercies are renewed day by day. Every single day. But what is this idea of renewal? How are we renewed? Now I want you to turn over to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. I don't think this is a stretch. I don't think this is a stretch. Um, you can make your own decision, but I don't think this is a stretch. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And I've put on the new self, which is righteousness, which is salvation. i put on the new self, who is being renewed to a true knowledge. So that word renewed is back, right? And that can also be tra a translated renewed according to a true knowledge. So how do you become renewed? It starts with true knowledge of true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. True knowledge of God. So this idea of being renewed day by day starts with it's not everything. It starts with true knowledge of God. I, I say it's not everything because obviously if I read the Bible more, if I just sit there and I just read the Bible more, that's not going to do the entire process of renewing you day by day. I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and tell you, read, your, read more chapters every single day and then you'll be renewed day by day. That's not the idea. There's people that have doctorates in theology that fall away from the faith. There's people that have doctorates in, in Bible and studying that fall away from the faith, right? So it's not all about true knowledge, but I am saying it starts with true knowledge. How do we gain true knowledge day by day? We have to be in the Word, right? We have to be in the Word. We have to study God's Word. And in order for it to reach our hearts, we have to first let it enter our minds. So this idea of being renewed day by day, mercies every single morning, um, is necessary if you're a Christian. So what I'm encouraging you to do right now is to not neglect the Word of God. When you're at home and you wake up in the morning, the first thing, the first thing that should be on your mind and in your eyes and in your heart is rejoicing in Jesus. Remind yourself every day that Jesus is better than all the suffering this world can give me. That's what you need to be renewed. And it's, I know it's, it's hard, right? Life is, ugh, life is hard. And I know some of your lives are harder, much harder than mine. So I'm not here telling you that my life is super hard, and I'm better than you for it. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that the Word teaches that mercies need to be renewed day by day. It's not a one-time deal, because every single day has troubles of its own. That sort of a side lesson that was for free. Um, let's continue. Renewed day by day. And that passage um, that says, Your mercies are new every morning is from Lamentations chapter 3, verse 20 through, 22 to 23. And then the passage where Jesus says, Each day has troubles of its own is Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. All right. So mercies are renewed day by day. His inner man is being renewed day by day. And then there are two words I want to focus on. All right? And this is key. This is where we get into the meat of the text. The connecting words, or we say, um, 
conjunctions, connecting words. And if you're studying your Bible at home, we talk about this in our Psalms class as well on Tuesdays, that you need to be looking for these connecting words, these conjunctions, because it, it teaches you about what comes after the conjunction. So at the beginning of our passage, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For, or sometimes as translated, because. So in order to understand why he doesn't lose heart, we must do two things. We must first understand what comes before, therefore. And we must also understand what comes after, because, or for. Makes sense, right? Makes perfect sense. So he says, we do not lose heart. Therefore, we do not lose heart. So what comes before? And we read the passage earlier. I'm not going to read the entirety of the passage, but he says in verse 7, we have a treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power of will of the of God and not ourselves we are afflicted in every way but not crushed perplexed but not despairing persecuted but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed we just sang those words always caring about the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body it's the gospel the gospel and the life of a Christian that's what he's dwelling on when he says this. He's dwelling on truth. Because every single day he reminds himself of truth. So he allows himself to dwell on truth. So he starts at a place of dwelling on, I'm a child of God. Jesus came down and he died for me. Someday I'm going to be in eternity with Jesus Christ. So where does the shift come from? He says later, he says, while well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. How can David suddenly start praising God? How can Job say, blessed be the name of the Lord? If you notice David in, in Psalm chapter 13, he says, because suddenly he starts saying, because of your loving kindness, because of your grace, I will worship you. Your praise will be on my lips. Instead of focusing on what is physically happening around him, he suddenly shifts and he looks up. And he says, your loving kindness has brought me where I am today. It has sustained me in the past. Your grace has brought me to where I am today. I will worship your name. No other name. It shifts to be completely focused on God. Things that are unseen. The command is literally to look at things that are not seen. Because it can be so easily distracting and so easily discouraging if every single day our focus is only on things that are seen. Right? We do that all the time. And I talked a little bit about that last week with the book of Haggai. As they're building the temple of God, right? God knows that their focus is, on, is what's on the outside. And it's not in Him, and it's not in where their hearts are. Instead, it's just focused on what the bricks look like, right? What the wood looks like, what the silver and gold looks like. And so often we're focused on what our pain is looks like on the outside. So there are three things, three things that he points out here. Why do we not lose heart? Number one, actually there are four reasons. Number one, dwelling on truth. And I didn't write that down but I'm adding it in. Number one, which is over all of the others, because you have to start there. You have to start there. Dwelling on truth. 
And how do we dwell on truth? We feed ourselves truth. And the Bible literally uses these kinds of metaphors. We eat and drink Jesus. Right? We drink Him. He is our supply. He's why we get up. He's how we get up every single day. So dwelling on truth, I want you to sort of act like is right here. Number one, over everything, dwelling on truth. Seeking God to be your um, renewal day by day. And then, number one, your suffering right now, here's a truth for you, is completely and totally momentary. Verse 17, and this is where we find his answer, verse 17. So now we've tackled therefore, so now we know what came before, now we're tackling because or for. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So number one, Suffering is temporary. Because everything in this world that is physical is temporary. So number one, it is momentary. Number two, it is light in comparison to future glory. In the moment, it doesn't feel light. That's why he says, look to what is unseen. Because if you look at what is seen, it doesn't feel light, right? It doesn't look light. It looks heavy. But dwell on truth and understand that in comparison to future glory, and that is a hope for Christians here today, for future glory, there is no comparison. It is light in comparison. It's not heavy. And then he says, it's producing for us an eternal way. He uses the word producing. Pain is producing. Pain is preparing. Pain is working for you. What an interesting thought. And in the moment, so hard to dwell on, but it's a truth that is necessary. Pain and suffering is utterly meaningful. things happen, it's hard in the moment to say, God has meaning for this. But He does. He does have meaning for the pain and suffering in the world. So number one, it's momentary. It's temporary. It's, it's in the moment and it's gone. It's this life and it'll be gone. And it's light in comparison to future glory. Number three, it is meaningful. And then he says, and I think this is the key, while well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. And the things which are seen are temporal, and there it is again. The things which are not seen are eternal. You're comparing the temporary with the eternal. Perspective is key. Perspective is what David had when he suddenly said, but I thank you for your loving kindness. Perspective is what Job had when he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Perspective is what Hannah had when year after year she went back to the temple. Perspective is what Paul has that in the midst of imprisonment, he says, we do not lose heart. So number one, suffering is momentary. Number two, it is light in comparison to future glory. Number three, it is completely meaningful. Therefore, there it is again. Therefore, we do not lose heart. There is a time for lament. There is a time for sitting in pain and crying out to God. But in those moments, it's where we have to remember and dwell on truth even though this hurts right now, this is momentary. It is light in comparison to future glory, and it is completely and totally meaningful. So number one, let's dwell on truth. Let's dwell on truth. So 
so that we can be renewed day by day. Uh, I would like to share a video with you about a story of a woman who perfectly exemplifies um, this truth. And the volume should be interesting. Can you turn this up? Yeah. Sorry.